Hello people, how's it going? Hope your day's going good. Judge Dan is here again to give an analysis on Maxo GBB Elimination 2023 in the solo. This one is a long time coming. I have been aware of Maxo skills for so many years, nine actually to be exact, because in 2015 is when I first caught wind of this guy and he has been so massively underrated for years. In fact, the truth is, just for fun, um, he's always been in my preparations when I'm battling. Um, around those years that I was doing that and I had my opponents, I was always considering the high opponent that I need to prepare for to battle. And now everyone's like, whoa, oh, Maxo on the scene. Whoa, have you seen him? He's sick. Yes, I've seen him. I've known he's sick for years. All right, so, whoa, I'm Dan. I'm so cool. I knew that. No, but it is a told you so moment. He's always been ahead of the game. So we're going to get into Maxo elimination at the GBB stage. Very interesting. I'm going to show you where I scored him. I'm going to show you where he officially scored. And I'm going to break it down and explain everything. I'm going to show you this judge POV. As always, I have in this series. You're going to see me in the judge panel, my reaction, my thoughts in the moment. And then I will watch that plus the whole video. So I'm going to take you there now and I'll see you after that.
Keep that love going for the Bulgarian power right here. Make some noise, Maxo! Great translation to the mic. Wasn't good translation for the mic. Sorry, that's about. All right. We only have two eliminations left. No Cody, that's Next to the stage, this is the great North champion, Rod of the Time Brothers. Just won a battle in Times Square. Times is square. Shout out to American Beatbox. But, coming from the United States. Alright, we're going to continue into this then. Um, I didn't see the judge POV. I haven't seen this back. Let's go and watch it. Maxo. Three, five. Alright. So this Wow, well, I actually kinda of did it a bit. Anyway, I can't do that sound. Um what I have noticed, observed straight away, is he is hitting very close to the limiter of the bass, the volume. It's all hitting right at the peak that it can. So strong level of volume to beatbox to start. There you go, yeah. This one extra off kick drum is really intricate, sophisticated flow. certain sound there. Hey. Nice. So what we have here is um perfect timing. Dum dum and then dum 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 dum. So I like to explain it with picture. Um this previous beat was curved and now we're boxed. So both on the exact same timing and he switched a groove into the build-up that is sick we have a lot of um discipline in his grooves hey I feel a little bit unsure in this section if we're going for a build up or a drop right now. I'm just going to reel this back. Um, and the indication here, swinging, felt like he was maybe going to get the people to clap for the build up. Here's the build. Oh. That thing there is a sick combination. <laughs> This has the same filter texture like helium, but this one feels more on the side. 
This is very unique. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, the lip pro's hitting really hard. Hey. <laughs> but it's like, ooh, ooh. it's got this hollow inside it that's really hard hitting. Let's go back. This feels tribal. Keep that love going for the Bulgarian All right, let's power see what I've got to say. Make some noise, Maxo! Yeah. Next to the stage. Great yeah. world champion. A lot of the time for this. Just won a battle in Times Square. Times Square. Shout out to America Beatbox. But, coming from the United States. Yeah, it was cut into the next elimination, so I needed some time to think. Um, it did feel around ZVDs right there. So yeah, let's break it down. Um, in fact, let's start with judge notes so I don't forget. So in the live moment, here's what I wrote. Control, exclamation mark. He has great control over his power and his execution. I wrote little more snare. I don't know what that means. I think there might have been a few snares that had m more consistency to hit all the way through. Just a little thing, so psh, psh, instead of psh, 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 psh. That's a tough thing to explain. I wrote simplistic structure. I wrote lacking a little maturity in the structure. Okay, I can fully relate to that now checking that twice. I'll talk about that one in a moment. And I wrote the best lip roll power, the top. So alongside Napalm and Wally, and um, now Maxo all hitting that limiter, all finding that top power range. So the structure for me was a really big part uh, for me when I was thinking through his elimination. Uh, for me, it definitely was exposed to the other artists and Maxo's elimination allowed me to realize that most the, the vast majority of the competitors had a very intricate arrangement through the piece from start to finish. And so it felt, Maxo's felt more exposed to me that it lacked a, a maturity or a story, I would say. Now, the story is subjective. You don't have to have a story in the way you perform, but it does engage the crowd and it does allow the judge or whoever's watching to believe and connect and for me, it was very hard to connect because this clap, uh, clap, getting the crowd to clap is asking them to emit energy instead of them doing it naturally. And so that started to become anticlimactic as he kept doing the, the clap. Um, so it felt like it was ineffective in the moment. The drops were never ineffective because the beatboxing was really high quality, but it lacked a little bit of connection, I would say. So there was a few opportunities to show a bit more originality or unique identity because we didn't have many melody, no lyrics, and a little bit more variation in the bar length. So bar length variation inside the drop. Like boom, dump, dump, and then repeat, boom, dump, dump. I think Maxo inherits the ability to go boom, then repeat. You know, so it's showing more variety inside each segment to show more things in a limited four-minute time. But he did show some... He it, There was a, a battling energy inside it. 
I feel like these beats would have been executed stronger in a battle format, for sure. Okay, we pull up the list here. Okay, so Maxo official rank was ninth. He was this close to passing into the battles. Very impressive. I had him in 14th place. So this was considerably lower than the average placement. 14th feels really right for me. I've got to say, I think he was better live than in the video. I think I would have this lower ranked in uh, if I was ranking the videos. I'd have this further down than the 14th. But in the live moment, it was better than that. I'm really scared I've messed up my order. I'm hoping it all comes out on the screen all right. I've got this to amend if it's needed. But yeah, we have Maxo in 14th place. There was just quite a lot of information missing here. I also think that he could have climbed the ranking by showing more complex skill that it feels like he has. He teased me with some fillers and a couple of moments that he has a skill level to display that can dominate other people. So there was more to be desired, I would say, in this one. I felt like he has more potential than that. Yet still ranking high because I am aware of the power, the quality, and I feel an artistry in Maxo. I feel a style that he has, as he always has had. I was uh, placing him below these people until they didn't give me a reason, basically. So ZVD was the last person to give me a reason why it would rank above Maxo. And then Pono was the first person that ZVD outperformed in a lot of live aspects. There we go. Hope you enjoyed the breakdown, guys, and I will see you for the next one. Catch you in a bit, everybody.